The first time I uh, heard the name Mine Okubo was when a lot of us in the Bay Area were herded into Tanfren. Tanfren being a racetrack down in the peninsula. And in a few days, I heard the name, and there was a little collage. I didn't know what a collage was in those days. Then Mine picked up old sole of a shoe and a few other tin cans and any other junk throw, throwaways that she put on a board and mounted on a, on a wall in one of the buildings. And that was an art form that I have first knew nothing about. And that was done by Mene Okubo. Now, and during the days and months that uh, we were in camp, that is in Tamfran, as well as in Topaz in Utah, uh, I used to see her with a sketch pad sketching away. Little did I know that that was going to be the basis for her book. And um, she probably had thousands more sketches, but uh, the book was a masterpiece of uh, recording what went on in camp, just the pictures. She had some little verbiage on it too, but uh, the picture told the whole story. Actually, if I ever really had a chance to talk to her, I probably didn't know how to talk to her, meaning that, uh, that uh, she was way beyond me. But I used to see her in camp, and then after I went to New York City, she also came to New York City to work for Fortune magazine. And, uh, and she lived in Greenwich Village. I used to see her walking up and down 8th Street, which was the main thoroughfare in Greenwich Village. She lived on East 7th Street near New York University, which she had a third story walk up. Today I would run down the stairs and then and then I'd come her and say, have, let's go have lunch. But today, in those days, I didn't know how to talk to her. Until I got to New York City one day, after I left the university, I and went to the University of Illinois in Springfield. I was invited by IBM to visit their headquarters. I did call her from the Grand Central Station that I'd like to visit her. This was a Sunday morning. He says, no, no, I, I can't see you, but I, by that time I know how to use my persuasion. So she finally says, oh, okay. So we went down and then went upstairs. Somehow we got through the front door, or I guess she released the lock from upstairs, the front door, outside door. So we went up to the third floor and I could hear rattling of chains and locks and so forth. And before she opened the door and she says, follow me. And we would walk down a couple blocks, maybe less than a block, to a bakery in New York City. Everything stays open all day, all night. And she bought a bag full of Danish well, pastries. Then we went back to her apartment and uh, it's a one-room apartment. Then she started to prepare some coffee and um, cut up the pastries and, and uh, serve it to us. She had all the paintings that she had in her room stacked up against one wall. And then she would start showing us each paintings. And I, then I later learned that this is what she did to all visitors. She would serve some refreshments and then started showing stacks and stacks. And she had paintings stored in different warehouses all over the city. Not in her, not obviously in her little cramped quarters, but uh, all over. And I often wondered, I wonder where some of those paintings are now. There were paintings that uh, I would especially some of those paintings that are in the books 
of in that creation, I will dare even ask. Regardless how much she asks, well, she probably would never want to get leave her hand while she was still alive. But there were some paintings she would uh, uh, offer for sale, and I learned from some other experience: never try to bargain with an artist. Whatever they asked for, if I were willing to pay for it, I would pay for it. But in her case, uh, it was quite reasonable. So over the years, we would correspond, and every time I would go to New York, I would go visit her and have dinner. And then, and then I usually managed to arrange to have a painting that she would be willing to sell to me. And she would spend go over town, especially the one with the birds. She wanted the right kind of mat board color. Uh, she started calling me a collector. I said, me, a collector with fine paintings? No way. But um, she, uh, uh, we became good friends. We corresponded mostly on, on her part. And a lot of them were Christmas cards and other greeting cards, but she was always write personal notes. When she sent out Christmas cards, it was in the 400 to 500 cards. And you, know, you would notice that the cards are not store-bought cards, those are homemade cards. Even the envelopes are from 8.5 by 11, which is folded and then made into an envelope. So you, you could see that uh, it's, it's probably good for her frugal nature too, but uh, it, it was a work of art, even, even the envelopes. There's one painting, I think the one with the boy with apple, the one that's in my photograph. My daughter in um, Illinois has a name on that. <laughs> she, knows, she knows good art. Um, she would uh, constantly do a lot of experiment. She had a bad time working for uh, as a freelance artist because they took advantage of her. And uh, she, I think, went away from New York City, lived someplace else, before she came back and started doing her own thing. So she had enough of these uh, uh, art galleries that would uh, exploit artists. You know, over the years, she had illnesses, and, uh, but she always came out of it. And uh, when I was in uh, Richmond, Virginia, when they had her, one of her shows in uh, Boston or even in, uh, in, uh, in the Smithsonian, they had a talk on her. And then I went. By that time, she was in the hospital. At that time, I regret that I didn't take the time to go visit her in New York City. They had her services, memorial service all over the country, I'm told. But Oakland was one of them because Oakland exhibited a lot of her paintings. And um, in that lecture room, there was an envelope on that stage there, nicely folded, probably out of rice paper. I suspected that was her ashes. And there was one faculty, UC Berkeley faculty, Carl Costin. Somebody asked her, asked him, is that? And he says, yeah. And maybe that's the way she, wanted, she would have wanted it, maybe. But I thought, anyway, I, I kept an eye on that all during the time people went up to talk to, talked about Mine or Kubo. But she was a fighter. She was a feisty woman.